What's good everybody, welcome back. Today, I have found some of the most racist shit having to do with this Ukraine war. It's amazing on the length that BLM members and leaders will fucking go just to make things about the black community and fuck everything else. And today we are gonna be discussing this video that I got from Sky News that was just taken within this past week. It was like three days ago. Um, today is the 15th. And there's apparently these two black females that are starting a fundraiser for to help black people, black kids, students, more or less like late teens, things like that, basically, is what this is going to help more than anything, I, if they're not just using this as a hoax. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is some propaganda. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if BLM is behind this some way, somehow. Um, because as you should know right now, that the war going on is between what they would consider two white countries. So just like this Gwen Ifill, or however you say her name, how she stated it's missing white girl syndrome. Well, of course these people have to make it about black people, you know. When in doubt, it's gotta be strictly 100% help the black people, fuck the rest of them, I guess, right? That's what these two racist bitches are wanting to do and acting like it's the majority of their country that it's just blacks so really what is the majority of their population that's black that they're literally trying to help because we're in they're in the midst of war over there so why would there be any racism when the people that people are hating right now are russians not africans but yet, they always got to turn it into a race issue. Check it out. A group of women have raised more than £95,000 to help hundreds of black students flee Ukraine as Russia's invasion continues. Karine Skye is one of those involved and has first-hand experience having recently left Dnipro herself. Karine, among others on social media, say that they endured racism while trying to cross the border and get their way out of Ukraine. Well, pleased to say that Karine joins us now, as well as the barrister, Patricia Daly, who's been helping to raise funds. Ladies, lovely to have you both on the programme this morning. Um, and Patricia, I hope you don't mind if I spend just a little bit of time speaking to Karine first to, to kind of hear her story. So, Karine, uh, just tell us about your time. What, what took you to Ukraine, to Dnipro, in the first place? I was a second-year medical student in Dnipro, and I was just um, studying medicine. There's quite a large... Um, African community in, in Ukraine, and they usually go to um, Ukraine to study medicine or other STEM professions because it's very affordable. So tell us about the, the thoughts that must have been going through your mind as Vladimir Putin began to invade the country and, and you started to consider, look, do I need to get out of this country or not? When did you make that decision? You know, prior to when the news was being released in the UK that um, the Russian troops were going to invade Ukraine, the news we were getting in Ukraine was that it was generally fake news and nothing was going to happen. I call serious bullshit that they was telling them that nothing was going to happen. For a few months now, before this invasion happened, they have been warning people that had was citizens of other countries that did not live there or if you had visas to other countries they told you within weeks prior to this invasion to leave ukraine if you did not have funds contact your country's whatever 
I'm not exactly sure on that part, but they told them to contact their administration in the country that they was originally from, just like they did Americans. They told them that you, if you do not have the funds, contact the American embassies or whatnot, and they would help you get out. Now, if you stuck past that window, that is your own stupidity for getting stuck into a war that you have no part in. But no, they gotta make make that, I guess, miss that so they can claim it all racism, right? Pathetic. They're like the movie, They Live. Take your fucking sunglasses off or put your sunglasses on so you can see what is real and what's not. You know, it, it's really pathetic that they're trying to turn this war now into a racial debate. Get the fuck real, BLM. So when it actually happened um, that day, I woke up and I was on Twitter and there was an announcement that Kiev had been bombed. I was I was shocked and in, in complete disbelief because we had the assurance thinking from the government in Ukraine that nothing was going to happen. And it was just, you know, fear mongering. And don't forget, like totally fucking racist too, right? And for a college student, she's using fear mongering kind of wrong. Definition of fear mongering. Fear mongering or scaremongering is the spreading of fight frightening and exaggerated rumors of an impending danger to purposely arouse fear in order to manipulate the public. So, please tell me, where were they using the factor of Russia invading Ukraine to manipulate the public? Over two million people have already fled the country. That doesn't count as manipulating the public. That was giving them heads up to get the fuck out before the fucking bomb started dropping. Get it right, bitch. But, oh, that's right, I forgot. It's racist. But to actually see it happen in real life and how things just changed by the minute and progressively got worse, it was very, very scary and shocking. My God, it's so racist. To, to, to tell us then, Karina, about the, the, the treatment, the racism that you experienced as you were trying to get out of the country. I mean, as you say, Ukraine has a, has a, has a large black population. I was speaking to one student from, from Nigeria yesterday who was, who was there studying, you know, describing it as his second home. So, so, so how were you treated? Just give us some of the specifics, if you can. Prior to the war breaking out, um, I think the student community, we tend to just stay with other students. We don't really, like mix that often now did you hear that that the that they don't mix don't really like mix that often don't really like mix that often and i guarantee you she's not meaning that that they mix with other students that they don't mix outside of their foreign exchange student group so anyone that's a local to that area i'm sure they stay the fuck away from them if they're white ukrainians i'm sure they stay the fuck away from them because remember the white devil's gonna get you because we're all the white devil right because we just all act the fucking same but yet it would be racist if, if I was to frown upon the whole black community over a few bad apples. So how come it's not racist for them? Because you know, there's really a, a thing called reverse racism, which means that they can be racist. Doesn't matter if you're white, fucking yellow, black, brown, any race can be racist to an opposing race. My God, people, how fucking dumb has society gotten? Here, I'm gonna educate you all. Definition of reverse racism, intolerance or prejudice directed at members of historically dominant racial groups. Um, I think some of the older students, you know, who've been in Ukraine longer, some of them go on to marry like Ukrainians, but generally the student population, we stay within um, other students. So I never really experienced um, racism prior to the war. Oh, did you hear that, people? 
Now, did you fucking hear that? Let's play that back real quick. I never really experienced um, racism prior to the war. I never really experienced um, racism prior to the war. I can't believe it. She said that she never dealt with racism before the war. So, big question now. Why are you gonna start with the shit now of all the times? Is it for the simple fact that maybe, I don't know, maybe are you trying to get everybody to allow all the black people ahead of them? Because we gotta care about them first and you're trying to make them treat them as if they're the priority, not first come first serve. Equality would be first come first serve, but I mean, I could see people making a fuss, probably starting some shit with you, but that wouldn't make them racist. You enticed the person. So just because somebody blows up on you doesn't make them racist. But this is just a theory for that scenario. So when the war broke out and we actually finally got into the Ukrainian side of um, the border and started experiencing racism. Now, see, I wouldn't have picked this part up if I hadn't been going over this video over and over and over again to make this video. But you heard her, right? I mean, like, let's play that back again the Ukrainian side of um, the border and started experiencing racism. The Ukrainian side of um, the border and started experiencing racism. Now, she states that once they got on the Ukrainian side of the border, that's when they started experiencing racism. Well, a huge question now. I thought that they was supposed to have already been in the Ukraine. I thought that they was foreign students to the Ukraine. I thought she stated that she had not sp experienced any racism in Ukraine during her stay until the war broke out. So why, if he was having issues getting out of the country why would you go back into the country that really makes me wonder how legit this story really even is so what i believe what we have here is blm trying to get into the market of the russian ukrainian war so they can profit off of shit like they did here in America and Canada and so on and so forth for the last few years now. And they have not done anything responsible with the funds except for try to buy mansions and expensive cars for the leaders and people running BLM. So that's what I really think we have here. And if that's true, that's some real low down, dirty shit that I've ever seen. I was completely in shock and disbelief because I thought in such a serious situation, the last thing you'd expect people to do is to be racist. I have to ask, well, what does these women consider racism? Is it a simple fact that she thinks that they all should be what? Bumped ahead of the lines or something? I mean, they have a pretty large majority of their population that is black people. How is it that now all of a sudden there's racism amidst? This shit doesn't add up. She has been asked, Explain examples. Explain examples of the so-called racism that she has endured. 
is what she's considering racism in fact them being pushed away and denied at the border because these people have green cards they don't live there they are only there for school so they technically have places to run to and even joe joe biden he stated that if you are a visitor to that country and have citizenship in another country, you have to contact your own country to help get you out of there. But apparently these dummies waited far past the window, pull them out, and now you want to claim racism because you can't get out or it's more expensive oh boo hoo places ain't accepting your student discounts during a fucking war oh boo hoo hoo yes, that's because you're black too right that's all you fucking people see racist 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 oh if you disagree with me you're racist if you don't do what i said you're racist get a fucking life and get a brain while you're at it so this is why um, Patricia and Tox and I came together to start fundraising because we thought, you know, fleeing a war is scary enough, but the additional um, layer of not having to face racism and discrimination is just unacceptable. You know what? Like, I really think that these two ladies should be investigated for fraud. I would really like to know what people they've actually helped and i guarantee you they're strictly only trying to help their foreign exchange type students that have visas that are only there for school that have places they can go to they can go home if they want unlike the actual ukrainians that are actually having their homes destroyed. But they wanna sit there, cause themselves to get stuck so they can boo hoo hoo and call the race card. Because fuck that there's a war going on. We need to turn the news about the racism in Ukraine that never existed before the war. Get the fuck out of here, bitch. I see straight through these women and I guarantee you that they are linked to BLM some way, somehow. Now these, the one lady, actually I think, I think both of them are from, they sound like they're from Britain or the UK or somewhere like that. And there's links to BLM out in those areas. So I really wonder if this is a BLM strategy. So is this another fundraising scheme that they're trying to come up with? It should really be investigated. Well, let, let's bring in Patricia at this point. And Patricia, thank you for being quite so patient. And um, how did you yourself get, get involved? I mean, pretty clearly, it, it strikes me that there are, 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 are perhaps quite a lot of people like Karine in situations similar to hers, trying to get out of Ukraine and, and experiencing the same type of utterly abhorrent behaviour as they, as they try to do so. Um, originally, when I started to get involved, it was because I remember that morning they had bombed um, a nursery. So it was to assist the children that were fleeing Ukraine whose lives had been turned upside down. So a quick Twitter search, because, you know, if you want to keep up to date sometimes with what's happening in the world, Twitter's the best platform to do so. Really, really, Twitter, the best place for news. That's, you might as well say Twitter and Facebook then is the best place to keep informed on news. Do you realize how, like, idiotic you sound? for saying that you have in fact made people dumber now let's trust big tech with our news right 
people like that is a complete utter hopeless loss to this world so when i was on twitter i saw that there was lots of black students in ukraine um, expressing that they are suffering discrimination when they're trying to cross the borders and they were not being allowed to get on trains buses nah it couldn't possibly be the fact that these are all students that had or have a place to go, a actual home to go back to. So I don't get where you all are considering yourselves as refugees. You all don't count as refugees. Have you ever thought about that? So in order for you to get across the border, you have to contact your country that you are originally from. Is that so fucking complicated or is that too racist for you? Has that thought ever dawned on you that you don't count as a refugee, so therefore you don't get let through with the refugees? You need to con contact your, I don't, I don't know what they're called, but all I can simply say is these people need to contact their own country and they are responsible for getting you back home, but you are not classified as a refugee. So have you ever thought maybe that's why? they're not letting you through with the actual refugees you are a visitor you are not a refugee um so i saw corinne's tweet and i decided to reach out to her because she was um one verified on twitter okay so we're gonna clear this twitter and facebook verification shit or verified bullshit up okay so official webs so authentic to encourage and maintain trust between users on the platform you will need to confirm your identity with twitter in order to be verified depending on the category you will be asked to choose on the following three methods of verifying your identity so id verification Provide a photo of a valid official government issued identification document, such as your driver's license or passport. This requirement applies to individuals, not companies, brands, or organizations. So, like, the whole idea of being verified is that these people have sent in documentation stating that they are the person that they have the name of on their profile. So they have to verify that you are the person that's actually in the photos that you're putting up saying that you are. Your name date of birth, social security, shit like that, they check. Your address. On top, if it's anything like Facebook, they'll send you something in the mail that you have to go pay and get, uh, fuck, what is that shit called? It's like a stamp, but it's basically like a witness but then they're going to want to see all the same documents that you had to send to Facebook or Twitter to prove that you are this person for them to give you that stamp to therefore send to the to wherever they want you to for the site to approve it. So being verified isn't having to be of any fame or fortune any and everyone you and i can both be verified you don't have to be a celebrity you don't have to own a famous company you don't have to be anybody to have a blue check mark 
Like that's what I've never understood. People get so hype and oh, we can believe everything from this person because they got a blue check mark. That don't mean shit. That just means that they are actually this person that doesn't tell whether or not they're a liar. That doesn't tell you whether or not they're a thief or any of that kind of shit. Even a fucking felon could have a blue check mark on their profile. It doesn't matter who you are. You just have to prove that you are the person in the photos and that you are that you are that name. It's that simple. So for you to go and back somebody just because they're verified is such an idiotic reason. It truly the fuck is. So I thought it, she would be a credible source to find out what's happening on ground and what we can do to support her and to support those that are fleeing Ukraine so that they can get to safety um, as soon as possible. I would really love to know where she thinks that this lady is a credible source just because she has a blue check mark on her fucking name. I guess that you're gonna believe anything and everything that that blue check mark person says then, huh? Because that blue check mark just means that they're just the most honest person in the world when it doesn't even fucking have anything to do with that portion of a person. But, like, their stories technically don't even coincide with each other. You know, you have the dummy, I mean, you have the, the scammer, the manipulator, whatever you want to call her, the one that started the shit. Then you have the dummy that is going to be a follower to that one person. Or are they both working with BLM just to get money from a cause that has nothing to do with them. I mean, you have the one girl saying like, oh yeah, we're trying to get this cause to go and save the children. And the other girl, which is the leader of the shit, is strictly only talking about students, foreign students, not Ukrainian students, foreign students. So that by that, wherever these people are from, their countries should be the ones responsible for getting them out. So therefore, I believe that this whole foundation is just another scam. Trying to get a couple black people to live like ballers and they'll never use any of the actual funds to do any good for the black community. And on top of it, I just love how they have to make it just all about black people and fuck the world, you know, because it's all about blacks or nothing at all. But yet we're the racist ones. No, they need to look in the fucking mirror because we see a war and all they see is racism. When this war has nothing to even fucking do remotely close to racism, it's a white country going after another white country basically even though there's a good population of ukraine and even russia that is black but yet it's all about racism the small brained ignorance i'm um, so patricia you, you you've raised a significant amount of money just just explain exactly how that money is used to help people get out of the country then yeah, so initially when we first started, um, Karim was actually using personal funds for her from her account to um, distribute to the students that were fleeing. Um, and she would send this for transportation because what we quickly found when we started to fundraise is that taxi prices, bus prices, train prices were being hiked up three times more than the usual what, what the students would usually pay when they were attempting to get to the borders. Excuse them for not accepting your student discounts in the middle of a fucking war. Like, you know, you should really be surprised that there's even any taxis, buses, or any of that shit running right now. You know, seeing that like half of the population has already fled the country. Not to mention, you have the fuel and energy and that being played with but 
no, what, what, we're just supposed to eat the profit just to, just to give you the same price, huh? I guess what, what are you gonna say that if they didn't, that, that they're racist for doing that? You really need to look in the mirror if you think that they're the ones that are racist. I guarantee you that the shit that they're not telling you in these scenarios is that they're probably trying to get pushed to the front of the line even though they're not considered refugees and act as if the black lives are more important than the rest of them and not go by first come first serve but oh they're black so you should put them ahead of you i guarantee you that that's the shit they're not telling you um so when we first started initially this is what the funds were used for to give the students transportation to get to the nearest borders as soon as possible regardless of how much the cost was um, after the students had crossed the borders, we found that there was a need for them to be um, accommodated. So we would use the funds to uh, put them in accommodation as they would only be allowed to stay at the hostel for um, emergency hostel for just a day. So then we had to now navigate and find a way to accommodate them for longer so they're able to figure out what their next steps are going to be. So generally it's been for... Um, for transportation and accommodation and now gradually as we're moving forward and things are settling a little bit for the students we found that they need food and some of them have medical needs such as uh, we had one student who had a family and his son was suffering from sickle cell and he did not have the funds to buy the usual medication that he would need to um, stop his son from having a crisis. See what I'm saying they don't even really keep fully to the, the, the same story. Now this girl went from saying the children to saying students. Yeah, foreign students that aren't refugees just because you were going to school in a country that now got invaded does not make you refugees along with the local population. You was given windows. You and every other student was given windows to get out, to contact your country's ministry, and they was to get you out. So I really don't think that they're going to use these funds like they're stating they are. Where's the list of all these so-called students they helped out? Because I guarantee fucking to you, None of this money is helping actual Ukrainians. And there shouldn't be any fundraisers going on except for to help actual Ukrainians, not helping other countries, people get in and out of the country. That is their own country's responsibility. Oh dear. Um, I, I, just a final word then from, from you, Karen. Um, Obviously, you've, you've managed to make it out, and we're very pleased that you, that, 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 that you have. I just wonder what your thoughts are of Ukraine, of what you're seeing on your televisions, reading in your papers, you know, seeing on your phone every day, the violence, perhaps even the war crimes that are being perpetrated on, on the people of Ukraine. What do you think of that? You know, throughout this whole experience, I've just said, when it comes to the politics um, in relation to war, that's not really my remit. I just love how she says that she don't have nothing to do with politics, but yet she's on the news, getting into politics, but trying to make it all about racism. Cause she knows so much about racism, right? Like she's had a firsthand experience in that. And when all these people just go back from shit that's been hundreds of years ago, cause I ain't got nothing that none of them personally have really experienced but i just want us to go back to humanity and remember that we are all people at the end of the day and, and a, a crisis like this we really need to band together and show you know we have each other's back and really uplift the spirit of community so um, we will continue to do our best to ensure that we can help other people but i think everybody who's part of the global community just remember no matter what we're all people yeah, just remember that we're all people, so please donate to my cause, my, my pretty selfish cause and pretty racist cause because 
yeah, we want everybody to back us, but we can't back everybody else. We can only back other black people. That's the message that I get from these two self-entitled bitches. It's a game. They don't actually mean half the shit they're saying on here. It's just free advertisement to get their fucking fraud thing going and just get a news channel to help them scam the world. Oh yeah, you're doing it to help these people. But in reality, they're just sitting back collecting and probably gonna try to buy some super mansion or some shit for themselves, just like all the BLM leaders did here in America. But the only thing is, is that now they're gonna try to take and twist a war into, it's all about racism, so donate to our cause and fuck actually trying to help Ukraine win this war, just help us help people that ain't even Ukrainians get out when because they're too lazy to contact their own country to get them the fuck out There's even anybody still over there because who wouldn't have fucking left when they could have left and then she stated something about oh i didn't deal with racism before this but then they said when they came back onto the Ukrainian side of the border, that's when they started dealing with all the racism. Get your story straight, bitch, because people like me ain't buying it. Corinne Sky, Patricia Daly, thank you both so much for appearing on the show this morning. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, it looks like these two women are real grateful and thankful that this news channel aired their stories might I say they're fraudulent stories. They couldn't even say thank you to the dude. How rude was that? Gave you about eight minutes of air time and you can't even say thank you? This just goes to show you that their shit's selfish. Fuck having any real respect for anybody else but black people. They're the true definition of what BLM is about. And even when it comes down to it, black lives don't matter. Only the founders of their organizations matter because they're, they're just gonna piss away the money and not help out the actual black community. They're not gonna go help build affordable housing for black community or anything like that. And just like these, they're asking for money for a worthless foundation that they claim is going to help people that technically isn't even refugees. All these people have to do is contact their government to whatever country they are from and their country would help them get home if they could not afford it. So I really think that these two women are trying to run a scam and I'm not buying this shit for an instant and neither should you. So if you really do want to help Ukraine help fund them with stuff that'll actually help them win this war because if they don't win this war whoever's there will most likely be killed but just focusing on foundations and fundraisers that are only there to help a very very small segment of people that technically don't even need the help really because they're too stupid to just call up their consulate of their own country and get a free ride home no they want to just use that as an excuse to come on tv and the news and try to scam people from all over the fucking world and use the ukraine war as the main reasoning behind it these people ain't trying to help local black ukrainians they are simply only trying to help foreign students that technically don't even live there. It has homes elsewhere, but they're trying to be selfish and use that as an excuse. When, if you wanted to help this situation, there are far more better ways to go about that. But I'm gonna end it here. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please 
If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Help us grow. Please also share the videos. So, hope everybody has a good day. I'm your boy Fat Mike, signing out. Deuces.